Hi y'all, welcome to Petite Weaver Crafts episode 17. I'm recording here today on September 26, 2016. Thank you so much for joining me today. So I have a lot to talk about this week. Um, I have a finished object, a few works in progress, um, including one you haven't seen before, as well as a knit along announcement. Um, and I talk a little bit about my wonderful weekend um, spinning with Jillian Moreno. So let's get started. So first up is my finished object. I finished my Gryffindor house sweater from last week. This lovely sweater is part of the um, Fringe and Friends knit along. I designed this sweater based off of my measurements and a set of tutorials on that blog on discussing how to knit your own top down sweater. Um, and here you see I added some lovely cable details on the side here. Um, it's a v-neck raglan and at the bottom you have the Gryffindor house colors. I still need to find some buttons that work with the sweater. Um, I didn't have any here but look at the back. How pretty! My inspiration for the back of the sweater is kind of a owl lace pattern. Um, it's very similar um, to the lace from Jenny's cardigan, um, it, which is part of the unofficial Harry Potter Knits um, collection on um, interweave, but this one is a modification of a fern lace pattern, and I added these eyes in um, to kind of give it a little bit more owly scowl look, um, and I continued the raglan cables down the sides. Um, and yeah, I love the way this sweater turned out. It fits wonderfully. Um, and yeah, I cannot be happier with the sweater. I'm super excited to wear it. As I mentioned last week, I'm going to Harry Potter World with my friends um, next month. And I'm super, super excited. I wish it wasn't so freaking hot here in LA. Um, I was sweating trying to just take some finished object pictures out of this. Um, but yeah. Like, if you guys haven't checked out the Fringe um, Association's blog before, you definitely should. Um, I cannot um, express how liberating it is to be able to kind of just make what I imagine in my head. Um, it turned out wonderfully. It fits great. Um, I never, I didn't have to worry about, oh, is this size the right fit? I could um, calculate all the measurements myself. Um, as I mentioned um, last week as well though, I did have a little bit of a hiccup with the way this raglan was looking. Um, I didn't cast on enough st stitches for my uh, sleeve the first time around. Um, I didn't like the way I had um, placed the cable and I actually changed up the cable pattern a little bit. Um, this cable um, is a four row repeat and in my previous it um in my previous iteration of the sweater i had it as a eight row repeat but yes i definitely see a lot more custom sweaters in my um future ah it's so cute uh and i think the um gryffindor colors are pretty subtle so i will be wearing this around and seeing if anyone else notices as well um, love, love, love the sweater. Um, uh, oh, I'm so excited. Up next is some stash. On Saturday, I drove down to Long Beach and, um, Alameda's Bay Yarn Company, um, in Long Beach had a Indie Dyer Fair and I picked up some lovely, lovely yarns, um, from some California based Indie Dyers. Um, so first up is this super gorgeous skein of self-striping yarn. Um, one of the stripes has um, speckles in it. You can kind of see the speckly color, um, but yeah, so there's a stripe of this kind of teal color, the light purple, the dark purple, the speckles, and then a little bit lighter blue as well. Um, I cannot wait to try this stain out. This is my first indie dyed self-striping sock, so I'm pretty excited. It's a gorgeous color. Um, and the colorway I forgot to mention is Cinderella and it, it and this yarn is on a 75% superwash merino 25% nylon base it's 460 yards um, 
um, you know, standard soft face, but oh my goodness, look, look how pretty. Forbidden Woolery was also there, um, and I picked up some more yarns from her. This is on her Pride base, um, which is the fingering version of the yarn that I'm using for my Meridian cardigan. This is 75% Superwash Merino, 20% um, Nylon, and 5% uh, Stellina. I don't know if you can really see you can kind of see the sparkles in there and it's just a lovely goldenrod color um the colorway is actually called goldilocks and and it's 435 uh, yards per skein and i got three skeins i will be making a threshold sweater by melanie berg it has a super cute boat neck and a lovely lovely um kind of diamond texture details on the front i'm super excited to be working with this yarn and i'm super excited to be working with the Melanie Berg pattern. I've heard such good things about her patterns and the garment looks gorgeous. And I cannot wait to have another sweater in my sweater chest. And the last thing I picked up is another skein of Material Culture Fiber Arts. This is her Pop Rocks colorway. It's the lovely purple with a stripe of kind of speckly purple pink in it. And this is on her Victoria DK base. So I got a chance to interview Tria. So let me just cut over to that interview at Alameda's Bay. Hi y'all, so I'm here with Tria from Material Culture Fiber Arts. We are at the um, Indie Yarn Fair at Alameda's Bay Company. So I met Tria um, at the Griffin Dyewear's Retreat, which I've mentioned before. Um, but today we're here at her booth and we're gonna show off some of her wonderful fall colorways. So let's take a look. Okay, so, um, look at the ocean, so I know. We have such a beautiful view here today. <laughs> We're spoiled. I know. So, Tria, lovely, lovely Tria, loves me and loves you guys and has offered to sponsor our first ever hat knit along for the fall. Yay! <laughs> um, so, as part of the knit along, she is offering a coupon code for us, you guys. Um, so, the coupon code is PW3. And you get free shipping on any skein of her Victory Victoria yeah. Victoria DK yarn. So here are some of the colors. I think a lot of you have probably seen my Etsy shop. I updated it a few weeks ago with all the fall colorways, but I brought some of them with me here today to show you guys. Okay, so um, we've got some special colorways here that are just for this event, but these are the ones that are on Etsy right now. So this is. This is our first color, this is Hanuman, and it is inspired by the Maki God Hanuman. It is an Indian inspired, beautiful, kind of rich tapestry, tonal, um, jewel tones for the fall. Oh my goodness. That's it's kind of hard to see you guys because the lighting in here, but yeah. oh my goodness, so these like, colors. Got some gold and some turquoise, some really rich magenta. Um, and it's just, it's a very rich color. And when you see it in the when you see it in the skein, it looks a little bit different when it's knitted up. So, do we have a sample of it knitted? Yeah, we do. So, um, this is a different weight. This is the modern era weight, but this is the colorway when it's knit up. Wow. And this is the ardent shawl. Oh man, I love these little pops of like pale purples yeah. and blues in there as well. I'm not a huge fan of orange, like I've mentioned before, but it really kind of blends itself into a wonderful warm color. Yeah, it's great for fall. Um, and then we have this um, lovely hat that we've already seen. So this is my hat here that I knit with Applejack. Okay, then the Applejack skates are right here. And um, again, this is a really bright, beautiful color. It's something nice to just like um, brighten up your fall day, especially here in LA. I mean, we don't really get a lot of snow. No, we, don't get, like, no. we have to pretend it's fall. <laughs> but we do get cold weather and it gets kind of yucky sometimes. So it's nice to have bright colors just to cheer you up. So this is fun. And then I got to tell you guys about this color. This is called Toyon, and Toyon is a plant that's native to California. What kind of plant is it? 
It is, um, it almost looks like a mistletoe. Oh, okay. Red, I don't think I've seen this. It's I'm red, not LA native. <laughs> <laughs> it's got red berries and dark green leaves. Uh -huh. It's kind of one of those plants that we use a lot in our um, Christmas decorations here. Oh, we make okay. garlands yeah. or whatnot. And in Claremont, we're right next to the Rancho Santa Ana Botanical Gardens. And so it's all California native plants. So this is named after that. Um, and it was actually designed by my son, who's six. Oh my goodness. And so he said he wanted something with neon green, black, bright red, and mustard yellow. Oh. And I was like, no. Okay, that works. That's no, we're not going to do that combination. <laughs> <laughs> but then we got in the dye studio and we started throwing colors together and it worked. It totally works. And it's I awesome. Love it. And so this is a hat. This is actually Rowan's hat. Is this a sock head hat? And this is the sock head hat, yeah. And that's made with that same colorway. And so when you knit it, it looks a lot more subtle mm -hmm. than it does in this It's game. a very, um, like, masculine colorway. Yeah, yeah. So Rowan loves it, of course. And the pom pom. And the pom pom. My favorite things ever. <laughs> and so, um... That's kind of a, a sneak peek at some of our colors. Oh, what's this one? I really like this one. Oh, this is Crescent. So Crescent is a combination of a royal cerulean blue, a little bit of teal, a little bit of chartreuse, but then with this warm gray kind of pop mm -hmm. to kind of even things out as a neutral. And within that colorway, um, a friend of mine, Amy, made this beautiful, beautiful shawl. This is the Great Divide. Oh my goodness. It's done by, um, pattern is by Michelle from Republic of Wool. Yeah, it's a lovely textured stitch. Yeah, so it's a fun stitch. I always look for patterns to work with variegated yarns. I mean, obviously, we're doing. And this is a DK weight one stage yeah, plus this an accent is, color? Exactly. So we actually used. Um, we use Quince and Co's Chickadee as oh, okay. the um, accent color. So that's another thing that I always encourage people to do. Like great use of stash. Yeah, like use use my yarn, obviously, but I mean, don't feel weird colors. About pulling yeah. something else out. Like, so yeah, that's a great color too. That's my favorite. Awesome. And as a prize, um, she is offering up one skein of any of her colorways in her Etsy shop on the Modern Era sock base. And that's the same sock base that I did the Hermione's Everyday Sock on. Um, and it's a wonderful base to work with. It's a great workhorse um, sock yarn. And okay, thank you so much, Tria, for doing this for us. And um, yeah, you can find her on Instagram as Material Culture Fiber Arts and on Etsy is by the same name. Yeah. So definitely check her out and take advantage of that shipping code. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much, Annie. Really am excited to see uh, everybody. Uh, love <laughs> so, yeah, Tria is offering free shipping for you guys on any of her Victoria DK skeins. Um, and the code for that in Etsy is PW Free. And that works for any colorway on this base. Um, and the base is 85% organic Polworth wool and 15% silk. Um, yeah, so the knit along will start October 15th through November 15th. So that gives you about three weeks to order your yarn. Um, and you can knit any hat pattern um, to be entered. I will be opening up a finished object thread on my Ravelry group. So post your finished objects there and you'll be entered to win a skein of your own and any of her colorways listed in her shop on the modern era sock base and that is a 75 percent um superwash merino 15 percent nylon 10 percent tencel and here is another skein that i have of hers that is on the modern era sock base another prize um will be a project bag made by me it will be one of these small bags um which fits about two skeins of yarn this bag fits a shawl pair of socks, a hat, um, it probably fits about two skeins of yarn in this bag. Um, it won't be this particular bag, I haven't chosen the fabric for you guys yet. But yeah, so if you would like to be entered to win um, the skein of yarn or the project bag, um, I will be opening up a thread on Ravelry where you can put, where you can post your finished objects. So other rules, uh, you can knit any hat you would like. Um, it just has to be an adult size hat and um, you can enter as many times as you want um, 
but the items must be cast on between October 15th and finished by November 15th. So that's a full month, um, which should be enough time for you guys to uh, knit a hat. And um, I will be doing a video on how I make, how I do the slip knot cast on, which is my preferred cast on for hats. It's super stretchy. Um, and it looks super great with any type of ribbing. Please use the hashtags PWC hat along um, on Instagram. And I may be giving out a few other small prizes uh, on Instagram. And I just want to see what you guys are working on. I'm super, super excited to be hosting my first ever knit along. And thank you again so much, Tria, for um, sponsoring this um, knit along. Uh, I cannot thank you enough. I will also be making a video tutorial on how to make pom-poms um both with and without a pom-pom maker so get excited uh i know i am and uh i really really hope you guys would like to participate as well and you could win free yarn um so yeah so let's move on to works in progress in this bag that i just showed you guys is my sock head hat and this is a free pattern using a sock blank that i won as a prize um, I probably made another maybe two inches of progress on this hat since I saw you guys last. Um, a lot of the yellow is not popping in. Um, and yeah, it's still fun. Um, now it's just kind of mindless knitting. Yeah, I didn't get too much progress done on this, um, hat, but it's a great grab-and-go project. So next up for works in progress is a new project. I do not have this project cast on. Uh, last time I spoke with you guys. So next up for works in progress is a new project. Um, I didn't have this cast on last time I talked to you guys. This project um, I cast on to kind of showcase some of the indie dyers that I was visiting on Saturday. So this is the hoodie shawl cardigan um, by Suzanne Summer. She has some super super cool designs um, in non-traditional shawls as well as um, like unconventional garment construction. Um, so this one is started out like a triangle shaped shawl, as you can see here. Um, and then you knit um, the body um, of the cardigan. So the hot pink here is Oink Pigments in Yarn Fairy colorway. Um, this is on their um, simple sock base. And I use the oatmeal mix um, yarn pack by Delicious Yarns. This was part of a kit that I won at the Griffin Dye Works retreat. I used the white and the tan color in the um, top part of this cardigan um, striping and I switched over to the tan right before I um, started doing the main body because I thought that the brown would kind of help transition the stark white striping to um, this bottom to the body part of the cardigan which is knit with Material Culture Fiber Arts. This is her Mojave colorway on her modern era sock base. But yeah, you can see uh, how well this uh, Mojave colorway is knitting up. I love, oh, this is such a pretty color. Um, it definitely looks a little bit different than what it did in the skein, but uh, I love the way it's coming out. Um, and yeah, so once I knit the body, then I can pick up for the hood and then um, knit the sleeves. It's a open front cardigan, um, so it's going to be a great toss on and run around the house in when it gets a little bit cooler here. But luckily, it should be cooling down this weekend. Um, I am traveling up to Lake Kachuma, which is north of LA, up in the mountains, um, and having a spinning retreat with um, my spinning guild here. And we're staying in yurts so it's not really camping it's more glamping there's flushing toilets and showers um and there's and there's electricity in the yurt um so that should be good um i'm gonna i'm super excited i love um having dedicated time to craft with people um which segues into uh, my lovely workshops with jillian moreno um so i took the yarn and texture course with her it was a full day course so this i think a six hour class um and we went over how to make the yarn you want this book is amazing it's such a good uh reference book i would probably recommend this book for advanced beginners um it's 
a little bit more technical on how to make certain types of yarns and how drafting techniques and um, ways to combine color will generate a different yarn for different purposes. Um, it's not a how to guide to spin yarn. Um, so yeah, it's a super, super awesome book. Um, she did sign it for me. She was super sweet. Um, she said that she watched a couple of episodes of this podcast and I, I freaked out a little bit. Um, but she was amazing, a great teacher, um, super knowledgeable and very, very generous. I took home a giant bag of fibers, um, bits and bobs so I can play with color as well. Um, but here are some of my samples that I made during the workshop. Um, so we did a, uh, I took two workshops with her. One was the yarn texture of how to uh, make the yarns that you want as well as color play. So that's why you see so many different colors. Um, but yeah, it was a wonderful class. Here are the samples up a little bit closer. Um, I definitely recommend taking classes from Jillian if you can. Um, I know she's touring uh, a little bit to promote her book. Um, so if you guys get the chance, you should definitely check her out. Um, and um, if you guys are interested in spinning, this is a great resource for you guys, as well as having some beautiful patterns in this book. There are 12 patterns in here um, by well-known knitting designers like Bristol Ivy and such. They're specifically designed to feature um, your hand spun and how and it goes into a little bit how to generate your, um, specific yarns for these sweaters as well. So yeah, here is the super cute um, sweater by Bristol Ivy. It is a brioche body sweater um, with stockinette sleeves. I I definitely think I'll be making one of these. And this is the Tetris Pullover by um, Julia Farewell Clay. Um, this is a super cool sweater. Um, I want to make one of these as well. This is the um, Maya Cardigan by Kristen Kapoor. Super gorgeous textured lacy um, sweater. But yeah. Um, yeah, super gorgeous book. Um, it's a nice uh, coffee table book. And it has great patterns designed specifically for hand spun. Um, so yeah, I'm super excited. Um, I will definitely be casting on some stuff from here. Um, I don't think I have enough yarn for any of them yet. I'll definitely be spinning some yarn for some of these patterns. I'm very, very excited. And I highly recommend this book. Um, it is um, priced at $29.95 US. Yeah, and you can find this book on Amazon. Um, but that's it for my action-packed episode this week. Really looking forward to spending this weekend up in the mountains. And I will hopefully have um, some hand-spun yarn to show you guys next week. Thank you so much for joining me today, you guys. And have a great week. Thanks. Bye.